students welcome back to the biology class we are discussing the chapter nervous system in the previous session we discussed about nervous system coordination and its types structure of neuron nerve and its type today we will be studying central nervous system central nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord brain brain is the control center of the body it is round in shape and has many ridges and grooves on its surface it is found inside skull or cranium the brain is covered by brain membranes called meninges brain membranes have fluid in between them known as cerebrospinal fluid the brain is made up of three parts cerebrum cerebellum and medulla oblongata the brain is connected with the body through spinal cord cerebrum the cerebrum is the largest and most complex part of the brain it is divided into two similar halves right and left which are known as cerebral hemispheres you can see cerebral hemispheres over here right hemisphere left hemisphere in the surface view of the human brain left hemisphere right hemisphere both hemispheres are made up of two layers outer layer is of gray matter and inner layer is of white matter gray matter it is the outer layer composed of cell bodies of neuron whereas white matter which is the inner layer it is composed of axons of the neuron outer gray matter and inner white matter let us see it more clearly in this figure you can see how neurons are arranged in brain forming gray and white matter see here gray matter it is made up of neuron cell bodies whereas the white matter inner side inner layer it is made up of myelin sheet each cerebral hemisphere has four lobes and they are involved with their specific functions these lobes are frontal lobe which is the seat of memory learning and reasoning it coordinates speaking also parietal lobe it receives sense of pain touch and taste temporal lobe this one it receives sense of smell and hearing helps us understanding the speech occipital lobe it is a visual area which receive impulses from eye through optic nerve so cerebrum is the main control center and is the seat of intelligence will power and consciousness it controls various voluntary activities and functions such as memory thought language speech and perception cerebellum cerebellum is positioned behind and below cerebrum it is much smaller in size it is responsible for maintaining balance in the body and coordinating muscles and their activities it also helps in maintaining the posture of the body while the de decisions are being taken by the cerebrum it is the responsibility of the cerebellum to ensure that they are implemented for example if cerebrum has taken a decision to adjust shoe it is the cerebellum that direct the muscles of the hand to relax or contract in order to complete the action medulla oblongata this is the lowest part of the brain it continues till the spinal cord it controls the activity of the internal organs such as it regulates heartbeat and respiration it regulates blood vessel diameter also helps in the reflexes like swallowing vomiting coughing and sneezing spinal cord spinal cord begins at the medulla oblongata of the brain and extend inside vertebral column or backbone almost till end it is made up of nerve tissue and remain protected by vertebral column or backbone you can see here spinal cord shaded in yellow and it is well protected by the outer backbone or vertebral column spinal cord also has two layer inner part of spinal cord is darker and 
makes up the grey matter which comprise of nerve cell bodies. The outer part of spinal cord is lighter and makes up the white matter which comprises of axons or nerve fibers. Students, a point to note here is that positioning of grey matter and white matter is opposite in spinal cord as comparative to brain. As you can see in this figure, grey matter which is made up of cell bodies of neuron, it's outside in brain, whereas the position of grey matter is inside in spinal cord. Similarly, the white matter which is made up of axons of nerve fibers, its position is inside in case of the brain, whereas in case of spinal cord, its position is outside. It is making the outer layer of the spinal cord. The main function of spinal cord is to assist the transfer of information between the brain and the various parts of the body and control reflexes below the neck. Now, what are the reflexes or reflex actions? Reflex action is a sudden unconscious and involuntary response of effectors to a stimulus. For example, we suddenly withdraw our hand if we suddenly touch a hot object. In this reflex action, the nerves in the skin or receptor detects the heat and passes the message through the sensory nerve to the spinal cord. Then the information passes through the motor nerve to the muscles or effectors of the hand and we withdraw our hand. So we can say that the spinal cord is the focus for reflex actions. Now let us see some important terms related to nervous system. Stimulus. It is the change in the internal and external environment of the body which causes a response. Response. The response is the change in the body due to stimulus. Impulse. It is the sudden electrical disturbance which runs through the nerves. Receptor. It is the sensory organ in the body that receives the stimulus. Effector. It is the muscle, gland or the body part which receives the response from the brain. So in today's lesson, we discussed about brain and its parts, cerebrum, cerebellum and medulla oblongata. We also discussed the structure and function of spinal cord. With this lesson, we conclude our chapter nervous system. I hope you have understood and enjoyed today's lesson. I will also be sending you a worksheet related to this chapter. Till then, stay safe, stay home. Thank you.